Hello everyone! Today's drawing is going to be that of a human form robin. Where I'm at, it's already spring and everything is really beautiful. And there are all these little robins early in the morning hopping around my backyard. So my sister requested me to draw one of these little robins. They looked like they were wearing waistcoats, so she wanted me to draw him wearing a waistcoat. Therefore, I decided to make him a butler figure. As usual, I started off my drawing with the flesh. So for my flesh tone, I actually got a new color, and it is E50, which is eggshell, and it's actually very, very light, and I used that as a base color. Um, I still left certain areas white to kind of give that really bright skinned look and then I used I believe it's skin white and then cashmere and um, those two were my shadow colors as you're drawing always remember where your light source is so in this picture it's coming up from the upper right hand corner and that means that his hair will cast a shadow, his eyes will cast a shadow, um, his brows will cast a shadow over his eyes, and then his chin, of course, will cast a shadow. But the difficult part would be his hand, which you can see, and that's because you have to realize his thumb will be up slightly, and that's where his, the light's going to catch. So keep those in mind as you're shading, and you'll have a very realistic looking shade. I also worked on his eyes a little bit which were done mostly in a kind of a pale yellow. I wanted his eyes to look almost bird-like. The hair of my Robin character was rather difficult. I knew that I wanted a reddish color so that his hair would look very Robin-like. But I didn't want it to be so red that it was almost cartoonish red. So I decided to go and um, use Tuscan Brown and a dark brown and blend those two colors together to create a kind of reddish brown hair. I then used um, my blending marker to blend all the colors together so that the highlight didn't look so sharp. When using a blending marker, be sure that you do not wait too long before you go through and blend everything out. You want to blend while the marker, the previous marker is still wet. So what I did is I used the Tuscan Brown and then I used the Dark Brown and blended those two colors together very well. And then I went through with my blending marker and blended in the, into the highlight. Then I blended all of those colors together and then went one more time in with my Tuscan and my dark brown. This provides a nice dark and rich color. In order to create nice shadows which were dark but not too stark, I used a dark blue marker. The dark blue served as a really nice shadow without being so in your face as black can be sometimes. I think one of the fun things to do on this character was his clothing. I was not sure what colors I wanted to choose for his clothing. To prevent any unmendable mistakes, I printed off on a separate piece of paper the basic format of the drawing. I then went through and tested all my color choices and played around until I found a color palette that I liked. Um, I did not use shadows or highlights in that test because I wanted it to be fairly quick. I then drew out what I wanted on the final drawing. With his red vest and his black jacket, this butler really looks like a robin. 
to prevent the black coat from becoming unrecognizable as anything but a black blob, I use several tones of gray and use black only for the deepest shadows of his coat. Once again, be sure that you blend to prevent the coat from looking like it is, to prevent the jacket from looking too splotchy. For the surface set, you must remember that tea, as it's pouring, can become translucent and capture light reflecting it. Therefore, I use my white gel pen in order to give the liquid a nice shiny appearance. And then came one of the more difficult parts for this drawing, the surface set itself. I was trying to make sure that the teapot and the teacup had a nice clean and crisp look so I used colored pencils to give it a nice crisp pattern. This is where it was a lot of fun to play around with different patterns that I found. I also used cashmere and um, goldenrod to provide a nice gold piece on the handle. Finally, it's time for the background. I was really uncertain what I was going to do for the background as I started. Oh, and as you can tell, I used my camera for taking a picture and then forgot to reset it afterwards. So it's blurry again and it's really zoomed in. Anyways, I decided to go with the dark blue, um, Robin's egg blue. Okay, well, it's not a really Robin's egg blue, but it kind of gives you that feeling. So um, I colored in the entire background blue and then afterwards I went through and put filigree. So I swirled one way and then swirled another and created this kind of fun area effect in the background. And then came the really fun part. After testing on a piece of paper in order to be sure that I liked the pattern, I drew a squiggly sinusoidal line and then drew filigree on that. I thought that it really brought in a nice form of nature in the background and it really it was a lot of fun and provided a contrast. Another note on the background, when you're drawing the lines, don't be discouraged if you cannot draw completely even straight lines. I thought that it added a nice natural effect even though some of my lines got a little on the sketchy side. As always, I end my drawings by going back over and checking for mistakes, 
or um, anything which needs to be touched up. So, and here I drew nice eye shine which gives the eyes life and I went through and put blue in a place where I forgot um, in the background. And then I went through and darkened some of my shadows.